welcome let's talk about android job scheduler job scheduler was introduced in android api 21 which is the lollipop it performs work on conditions or on time job scheduler is guaranteed to get a job done it can also minimize things like radio use which is a clear battery win how can we integrate a job scheduler into an android application we are actually going to be implementing this logic into a demo app I have right there in the channel called How to Sync SQLite Data to My SQL Database Online in Android. We are actually going to be uh, integrating the Auto Sync, which will be using the Job Scheduler to implement. Uh, presently, the app is running on a manual sync where you need to tap. Uh, the sync icon to actually get uh, the users uh, registered in the SQLite database down to the MySQL remote server. Without much ado, I'll be adding straight to the code. You can pick up the source code from this GitHub link and uh, you can download it and get started with me. Right there in Android Studio, We'll be including a dependency called the Android Sync HTTP 1.4.9. This helps to uh, actually implement the async tags. That's the sync, uh, the HTTP async tags right there in your application. So after that, you get your Gradle Sync. And uh, I will be highlighting the structure of the application. The activity main is just uh, a bunch of a list item where you have uh, the list of the users registered. We have the users and uh, the button to actually trigger uh, the add user method, which uh, takes on the on click add user. And uh, we have the list item wrapped around a relative layout. You also have the add new user uh, layout where you have the ability to add a new user. Uh, we have an input field of enter user name with the int uh, to actually depict what you have to do there. We have two buttons. The first is to save, which triggers the add new, new user method. And the second is the cancel, uh, that also triggers the cancel add user method. The user entry just depicts uh, the item, which is basically the username and the user ID. If you uh, need that to actually be displayed, we actually get that to be gone. The visibility is not uh, visible. So you can actually make that visible if you need the ID, which is just uh, a one, two, three series. Heading straight to the Java classes, uh, we'll first of all look at the DB. Uh, let's look at how we created the table. We created the table right there in the onCreate on method, right in the DB controller that extends the SQLite open helper. And uh, we actually have uh, the query here, that actually creates the table users based on three columns user id with the integer the primary key the username the text data type and the update status which is also a text data type we have the insert user into the sqli database i'd actually inserted all the users the username the status and uh, an array list to actually get the list of users from the sqli db as an array list so you actually iterate through the cursor first of all move to the first and iterate through to actually gets the whole bunch of users right there in the users uh, table and the compose json from sqlite this actually uh compose uh the json to key value pairs that's just like the array list you have and now it's going to be in a json uh, notation that's why we need the json actually uh included that through the dependency the json and uh you have the json view that converts uh, the list which is the array list to a key value ps so it's actually going to uh, be understandable to the server get the sync status uh, to know if you've actually sync or not and also the db sync count this gets the sqlite records that are yet to be synced and uh, we have the last but not the least the updates get sync status actually uh, gets updated the sync status against each user ID. So these are just out of the box. We've actually had that integrated earlier on, just taking a brush through on what we had. 
and uh, from here we'll be either straight to the the main activity is just simple uh, we had that uh, done earlier where you actually uh, instantiate the user list which is the list you're actually getting the records from the SQL database and uh, we have a list view adapter actually you use the list view out of the box on the simple adapter and uh, we actually populate that and the progress dialog that kept on uh, going on and uh, the manual sync was uh, what we triggered right there in the sync SQLite to my SQL DB so this will actually be converted to the job scheduler so let's get uh, that rolling now for us to actually have a job scheduler right there in the application you need to run a uh, API minimum of 21 which is the lollipop as I said earlier and uh, you can also run it on other uh, device just that so it will only trigger in our devices that run uh, API 21 and above uh, we have that right there in the sub package called a sync and create a user sync service this service uh, you need to extend the job service and after extending the job service you will have to implement a few methods the first method is the on start job the second is the on stop job the on start job executes your job while the on stop job is called by the system if the job is cancelled before being finished so we have our, our own on start job here with the job parameters and right inside here is where we have the sync users so this triggers the sync users which actually uh, calls the uh, where we create the, AS, the async HTTP uh, client object which we have it right here as client and we have the params as the parameters we are setting up this is a user list where we have the list of uh, all users right there from the array list we check for the size if the size is not equal to zero we don't want to uh, sync an empty list that's the sense of that and now we call the controller the controller is actually uh, an object of the DB controller which extends the SQLite open helper now we trigger the DB sync count and test if that two is not equal to zero so we don't have an empty sync now you need to pull the parameters the first is the user JSON you're going to actually get that right there in the back end I'll employ you to uh, get uh, the back end code from the uh, channel as well at the end of the video I was actually going to be pointing uh, putting the link to all the files needed and now you need a client post uh, this is the link which is right there in the server uh, we trigger in the insert user PHP so the insert user PHP needs the user JSON uh, parameters and this instantiates uh, the async HTTP response handler once you instantiate this particular class you need to override two method the on success and the on failure the on success uh, this has three parameters the status code the headers the response body that's the response you have so you have to print to uh, line the response body and this is where you get uh, the bunch uh, done where you have the JSON array and uh, passing the response body and they follow through the array uh, based on the argument of the array length so, so that once it gets to the end of the array it's going to stop the loop and at the same time it gets the ID get the status and it triggers the update sync status this is when it pulls uh, those values down to the server so you have that done and the toast came out that the db sync completed if not an error has occurred on failure probably if you get a status code of 404 that means the requested resource not found for 500 something went wrong at the server and that's the server uh, side uh, error and uh, if uh, none of this uh, code came out but yet it failed as an, un uh, not an unexpected error occurred so that's just it and uh, finish up your sync users so you can still call on job finished probably something happened along the line that uh, uh, the, the sync just didn't complete uh, it's actually going to trigger a job finish error so that's actually going to trigger that so with this now you've been able to set up your job but that is not uh, the end you still have some other parameters you need to handle for example you need to you need to uh, create the job scheduler itself 
which I actually did right there in the main activity. You need a job scheduler. Let's get to look at the main activity. Cool. Now we have this, the manage sync job. Now this is actually going to run on different conditions. We have different conditions that uh, can trigger your job. Firstly, the network type, it can actually be metered or unmetered. That's if your job requires network access you must include this condition. Secondly, we have another condition called charging and idle. If your app needs to work uh, that is resource heavy, it is highly recommended that you wait until the device is plugged into uh, the, the power or it's idle. And uh, we have another condition called the content provider update. This actually works with API 24. Uh, where you can actually assess the content provider uh, from your job and uh, we have another one called the back of criteria we have the minimal latency and the override deadline I actually use that right there in this uh, application this actually has a minimum time and uh, there's uh, the extent that's the the override deadline that's uh, you actually want to set your job is better if you want to set your job using the intervals so you declare that are based on the job interval you have and now let's look at the periodic so if you have work that needs to be done regularly you can set up a periodic job this is an alternative to the alarm manager this actually helps uh developers out there to replicate uh, the alarm manager with a job scheduler we have persistent and extras these are all different conditions that must be met if you actually declare them in your job scheduler itself which I'm actually are going to talk about now so these are the conditions we're talking about and now let's look at us uh, to share the job scheduler and you get a system service to call the context the job scheduler service now you have to run the job this is the interval we set up which is 15 minutes 15 minutes is the lowest interval you could set can set more than that you can set 24 hours you can set 48 hours depends on the interval you want your job to run and uh, you call the job service over here uh, this is the object of the component name that actually triggers the particular activity that triggers the job and the sync service the class that the job is actually going to uh, be triggered now these are where you set up the conditions firstly set up the condition of the minimum latency which I've said earlier, based on the job interval, which is the time in milliseconds, and you set the override deadline, that's the, the highest time limit you can give your job, that's before then it must have triggered, that's what the minimum the override deadline actually means, and set the persistent, we actually need this to be persistent, to true, and now we set the required network type, we need a network, because you need to push uh, some data down to this, the remote server which would actually use the net, the internet service so that's why we actually uh, specify that condition and now it's actually pointing at any network type so this can be Wi-Fi it can be a uh, metered it can be a uh, cable it can be the the uh, service provider that's the network provider right there in the device so any network type that's uh, the the device connected to will actually uh, trigger this job based on the, the timings of uh, as well so with all those parameters met you can build up your job and have the job scheduler to actually call the tax and trigger the result success so this is actually how to structure your job and we have a sync job id which uh, you actually declared up here uh, it's a private just an integer it's a static private uh, uh, final integer uh, which we give a, a an integer of 43 with that you have structured and set up your job and you actually need to trigger this method and we trigger it right there in the on create method where's that on create method over here so you manage the same job without this the job won't trigger the interval won't be called so with that you have it fully set and running the last thing you need to do, you actually need to go to the manifest. In the manifest, you need to register the 
the service, the, the sync service you actually uh, declared, which you have it right there, right there before the closing tag of the application. You have the name, which pointing to the service class, you actually uh, uh, called that actually implements or extends the job service. And you have to give a permission, which is the Android permission bind job service. And uh, you can actually make your job exported as another application may trigger your job. That's what that uh, is actually doing. The Android exported to true. With all this setup, you have your job fully running. And uh, you can actually test and see if your job actually worked. It's going to work because it's, uh, it's actually tested and it's uh, efficient. It's an efficient way uh, to actually set up a short running tax, a long running tax any tax whatsoever that you feel that uh, it should it may not really need uh, user interaction uh, you can actually use the job scheduler to do that so with all this i'll be uploading the source code to my github and at the same time i will employ you to practice this uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout the session and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel have a lovely time bye bye